So we had one strategy that we applied to this simplify. And now we're going to, well, let's talk about conjugates before we start multiplying by them. <clears throat> so we'll go up in the third strategy. Multiply by conjugate, divided by conjugate. So conjugate is um, a complementary term. So a minus b and a plus b are conjugates. And when we multiply these out, we get a squared minus b squared. You can write the outside term and the inside term. The outside term is AB, and the inside term is negative AB. So when we multiply these two terms together, the outside and inside terms end up canceling out. So we just are going to not write those. So this is how conjugates work. You may have seen this called difference of squares. That's another common name for this. And you can factor the difference of squares as conjugates. So we're going to use conjugates uh, by multiplying by the conjugate. But of course, that would change things. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate over itself, which is the same as multiplying by just the number 1. So we're going to do that strategy on this next example. So we're going to show this identity is true. Cos x over 1 plus sine x equals 1 minus sine x over cos x. So when we prove identities, we're going to start on the more complicated side. And that'll be our first strategy. So that's the strategy is the top one. Start on the complicated side. So we're going to start on the comp more complicated side. <clears throat> both sides of this equation seem equally complicated. They both have fractions. They both have a similar number of terms. So this denominator looks a little more scary than this denominator. So when it comes to fractions, I'm a little more concerned with their denominators. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the left side is more complicated, so I'm going to leave the right side alone. So to leave the more simple side alone, or the simpler, the simple, that's not a word. I think simpler is a word. Simpler? The simplest is a word. I think there's an I in the sentence. Oh, yeah. No, that looks wrong. I'm wrong. There's no liar in there? Wait. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate. So just looking at this, what is the conjugate? What possible conjugate could we have? So we'll look back at the conjugate real fast. So if we have a minus b, the conjugate's a plus b. If we got a plus b, the conjugate's a minus b. So that's how conjugates work. They occur in pairs. So we're going to look for either a plus b or a minus b. So there's only one plus right here. 
So what's the conjugate of 1 plus sine x? 1 minus sine x. There we go, 1 minus sine x. Now, it would be unfair to just multiply by 1 over 1 minus sine x. So multiply by 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. <clears throat> so we're going to multiply the conjugates on the bottom. You can absolutely FOIL them out. But remember, they are going to show up as 1 squared minus sine squared. The outside and inside terms are going to cancel if you FOIL. So you don't really have to do the full FOILing because you know the outside and inside terms are going to cancel each other out. Now what should we do in the numerator? I recommend on the non-conjugate multiplication, do not distribute. And you'll see why in a couple of steps. So I recommend do not distribute that cosine x. So now you should be wondering, well, I kind of want to cancel these two out. Why is that not OK? So, But only one part of the bottom is squared. That one square doesn't matter. It's that squared that's going to prevent us from canceling right there. So I could factor out 1 minus sine x and then cancel it, but then I would be right back where I started. So that's not, it's not incorrect, but it's not very productive. So what we're going to do instead is now use an identity. This right here is useful. So I'm going to write down an identity from before. That will help us here. So here's our Pythagorean identity from before. Co squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And I'm looking for sine, uh, 1 minus sine squared x. So I'm going to subtract sine squared x on both sides. So we've got co squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So now I'm going to replace 1 minus sine squared with cos squared. So any questions on using that identity and the substitution? What do I get to cancel now? So if it's not clear yet, I'm going to write cos squared as cos times cos. What do I get to cancel now? Okay. One of the coses. So we'll cross two of them out like this. And that better be what we started with on the right side. So it was our goal to turn the left side into the right side. So you're basically just going to transform one expression into another. transform one side into the other. So we're ready to write down our next strategy, which is add fractions. So really fast review on adding fractions. 
So in order to add fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So if nothing's in common, what we're going to do is multiply <coughs> the first fraction by the second denominator and the second fraction by the first denominator. And we get AD plus BC over BD. So this, you've been doing this for a long time since you've been adding fractions basically. You're just multiplying by the other's denominator. So that's how we add fractions. And we're going to do uh, some adding fractions here. So in this next example, we're going to simplify by adding. So we got 1 plus sine theta over sine theta plus cotangent theta minus cosine theta over cos theta. So if I uh, didn't write out basically the first step was add the fractions together, if I didn't write that out, it may be good to multiply by a conjugate over a conjugate. Uh, but in this case, I want to specifically add these fractions. So we have to multiply each fraction by the other's denominator, basically. So we got cos x over cos x times the first fraction. Oops, not x. These are all thetas. And then need sine thetas in the second fraction. So we have cos theta plus cos theta sine theta over cos theta sine theta. And I'm distributing the top on the right side also. So we got sine theta cotangent theta minus sine theta cos theta. So ready to add the fractions, go ahead and add these together and do as much simplification as you can. So I'm rewriting cotangent as cosine over sine. That was another strategy we had, right, in terms of sines and cosines. And now I see sine theta, sine theta canceling. And we have two cos theta in the numerator now. And 
And finally, cos data cancels cos data. And we get 2 over sine theta, which we can write as 2 times 1 over sine theta. And what is another trig function for 1 over sine theta? That is cosecant theta. So we can simplify this all the way down to 2 cosecant theta. All right, so that is adding fractions and then again rewriting in terms of sines and cosines. So the next one, the next strategy we'll look at is factoring, which we've done a lot of. One way to factor, difference of squares is already written on the board. And of course, there's lots of other ways to factor too. So factor is our next strategy, and we'll use it right here on this example. So we have sine squared v minus 1 over tangent v times sine v minus tangent v. So what is an obvious factoring we can do? What in the denominator can I factor out? So I see tangent, tangent. So I'm going to factor out a tangent. Oops, better leave some space. So what am I left with after I factor out tangent v? Just sine v? Minus 1. Minus 1. All right. So here's the wrongest thing you can do. Why is that incorrect? Because the top one is squared. Because of this little square right there. So we can't just cancel them out. So I can't cancel those two yet. What <coughs> we're looking at at the top is actually a difference of squares. Or it's going to factor like conjugates. So if you want, you can write 1 squared is 1. So there's actually a difference of squares right here. So go ahead and write out the factoring. So this will factor into conjugates. So write the two conjugates down and then cancel. So the conjugates are sine v plus 1 and sine v minus 1. That's how it'll factor as conjugates. And now, finally, we can cancel sine v minus 1, sine v minus 1. So those two are going to cancel out. And we're left with sine v plus 1 over tangent v. <coughs> now here's where uh, the instruction simplify is ambiguous, because how simple is simplified. So maybe you did some simplifying, but then somebody else did more. And so where exactly is simplified? Uh, I'm going to rewrite tangent in terms of sines and cosines, and maybe we'll get a little more simplification. So this is certainly more simple than we started, without a doubt. So let's rewrite tangent in sines and cosines. So 
So we have multi-story fraction, and we're going to write it as a product with a reciprocal. And we distribute. We get cos v. The sine v's cancel out in the first multiplication. And cosine over sine is cotangent. So I would say both doesn't have an e. Both are simple uh, simple enough. So I would say both of those are simple. They both have two trig functions. Technically, cotangent still has a, a denominator because it's cosine over uh, cosine over sine. So both of those would be okay. Final answer here. So when I give you your quiz problem, what it's going to say is either establish the identity, prove the identity, verify the identity. Uh, so I'm going to give you an equation, and it's your job to tell me why one side can be transformed into the other side. So I'm not going to give you questions on the quiz that'll say simplify, because that's ambiguous. So we're going to. So the rest of the problems are all going to look just like a quiz problem could be. So this one will be establish the identity. So our first identity we're going to do is sine squared negative x minus cos squared negative x divided by sine negative x minus cos negative x equals cos x minus sine x. So this identity, first of all, <coughs> we have to deal with negative inputs. So we need all of our even odd, well not all of them, but we need even odd for cosine and sine. So I'll write down our properties over here. Cosine was even. So cos negative x equals cos regular x. Sine is odd. So sine negative x is negative sine x. So we're going to go ahead and use those properties. But first, I'm going to rewrite exponential notation using this form right here, using this slightly better uh, exponential notation written outside. And now I'm going to use the even odd properties on the right side of the board. So sine negative x is negative sine x. Cos negative x is regular cos x. And the denominator, sine negative x, is negative sine x. Cos negative x is cos regular x. So are there any notation questions with the square powers or even odd questions? I'm about to look at <coughs> what happens when we square negative sine x. So is this negative sine in front important if we're going to square it? So that if we square it, yeah, if that was negative, it's going to be positive anyways. So that negative sine is not going to matter. So this is just sine of x squared minus cos x squared. Now in the denominator, I'm going to factor out a negative 1 because they're both negative. And write it like that. 
How can I factor the numerator now? Sine squared minus cos squared. How does that factor? You've seen it a few times. So these are two squares, and they're being subtracted. So this is a difference of squares. So these are going to be conjugates right here. So it's going to factor into sine x minus cos x times sine x plus cos x. Divided by negative 1 times sine x plus cos x. And now we can finally cancel sine x plus cos x, sine x plus cos x. Those cancel out. We get sine minus cos over negative 1. And let's multiply by, let's see, negative 1 over negative 1. So we get negative sine x minus cos x, which is cos x minus sine x. Now I should have been paying attention to the right side didn't really make a big deal about. The right side was way more simple, so I should have put it in a box and not change it around till the end. So the very last step, we got what we were looking for on the right side. We're going to do a few more of these problems but you have all the strategies that you need, so you should be able to uh, get started on the homeworks for this section.